This is a special report from ABC News Digital. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report. It is New York versus Chicago in the Battle of the Buildings. There is a big debate on whether New York's new World Trade Center is really taller than Chicago's Willis Tower. This is a live look, as you see there, from the tower. The Freedom Tower, as it is also known, is a symbolic 1,776 feet tall. But that is including the 408-foot spire. And some architects said that that shouldn't count as part of the building, which would mean that the World Trade Center would be 83 feet shorter than Chicago's Willis Tower. So to settle that fight, an expert committee of architects took the matter into their own hands. The height committee of the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat is about to announce the verdict. Let's listen in. Or the United States of America's tallest building. And... The announcement, which I'd, uh, we will, I'd, I, I will make the announcement now, and then we'll turn the boards and issue the press release. America's tallest building, when it completes next year, will be One World Trade Center. After 39 years of holding the title of America's tallest building, Sears um, will be number two in the U.S. And we will distribute the press release and turn these boards, and then we'll explain why the committee came to that decision. Can you turn off Okay, so the announcement today is that the One World Trade Center Tower in New York has been ratified by the CTBH Height Committee as having a height of 1,776 feet to the height to architectural top. Um, and you can see that in this diagram and on, the, on the panel here. Um, let me explain the process that led to that decision. The Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat is the official arbiter of height and measuring tall buildings. Um, and on Friday, its height committee met here in Chicago. It is a, a group of 25 individuals um, uh, representing approximately 13 countries around the world. People from the architecture profession, engineers, construction professionals, owner developers of tall buildings. And they met to uh, spend an afternoon examining and looking at the facts with respect to One World Trade Center. We received a presentation from the design team in New York, including David Childs, who is the design architect of One World Trade Center, and also a representative of the Port Authority, which is the owner developer behind the building. The issues, the issues that were discussed on Friday were basically twofold. The first issue was, is the topmost structure on the One World Trade Center, a spire or an antennae? And this is an important, uh, that, that was an important aspect because in our criteria, spires count in the height of buildings and antennae do not count. And the issue was that earlier this year, actually last year, the, the architectural cladding which was originally envisaged to, um, to crown that, that, that topmost structure uh, was removed from the design. And therefore there was confusion, uh, I think, generally as to whether that would be a, uh, a, a, a spire or an antennae. The, the height committee looked at it in detail and they ruled virtually unanimously that that was indeed a spire and not an antennae. And the reason for this, there's a number of reasons, but the key word here, the key word is permanence. The decision that the, um, the decision that antennae do not count in the height of a building is because the, the antennae are not permanent to the building design. If we think about the, Sears the Willis Sears Tower here in Chicago, when that building was originally finished, there were no antennae on top. The antennae then came on the building. Um, depending on the prevalent technologies, the antennae may get shorter or higher. Um, 
And indeed, we saw that. The, the antennae got about 16 feet taller, I think, in the year 2000. So antennae do not count in the height of a, of a tall building because they are functional technical equipment which is put on top. Um, the committee were quite clear that that was not the case on One World Trade Center. This is a permanent feature. And we, can, we know that it's a permanent feature because of the, the, the sacrosanct aspect of the 1776 height. In other words, that crowning structure is never to be added to, never to be taken away. And further to that, it has been sim it's a very symbolic height, not only because of the 1776, but because that height is marked with the, um, with the incorporation of a lighthouse type beacon within the crowning structure at that height. And this was quite influential on the committee. It's not only the fact that it's 1776 and the, the topmost structure would not be um, altered in any way in the future, but that this was marked with a very important architectural element, a very important architectural and, and, and symbolic element, which is the beacon, which will shine out every night, as well as the, the, the mast being, uh, the, 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 the spire being lit up um, you know, uh, on, on special occasions and uh, at night time, things like that. So there you can see on the left-hand side, 1776 height to architectural top. Here we see a close-up view of the, ante of the spire. Next, next slide. Here we see a view in the factory of this beacon element which is on top of the spire as we see it here. And on the right hand side, a close up of the, of the spire being assembled. And even though the cladding was taken off this spire, you can still see that it is an architectural element. Subjectively, you might not like it. But the council is not here to give a subjective opinion. It's to measure height and give an objective opinion on the height of that spire. And therefore, um, this was an architectural feature. It is not just a plain steel mast from which to hang uh, antennae and uh, satellite dishes. There we see the spire lit up in the evening. Now, the other issue, there were two issues at the One World Trade Center. The first issue was the, um, was the spire on top. The other issue was the base of the building, because the CTUH height criteria at the base of the building states that the, the, the height of the building is measured from the lowest level open air significant pedestrian entrance. And there was some confusion with the One World Trade Center because there are three entrances on the north, east, and west side, all at the same level, accessed off the Memorial Plaza, and that's where the 1776 height was measured from. But there is a lower entrance, which you can see to the north there, off Vesey Street, which is five feet and eight inches lower than the main entrance. And there was debate as to whether there should indeed be a five feet and eight inches ha added to the height. Um, and the committee um, discussed this at some length and decided that according to the C2H height criteria, that entrance is not classed as significant. And the reason is because the whole of that floor that you see, the whole of that floor is at one level, and I believe it's projected that something like 99% of people will be entering the building via those three entrances off the Memorial Plaza. Not from Vesey Street, which you can see you come through doors and then go, go up a series of steps to access the lobby floor. So there you see an image of, um, of the main entry from Memorial Plaza. So I know many of you are, are here today because we're in Chicago interested in how this impacts uh, the Willis or Sears Tower. Um, this is a diagram of the projected tallest 10 buildings in the world. Now, there's one very, very important thing to point out here. One World Trade Center is not the tallest building in the US and will not be until it is completed.
Another aspect of our criteria is the building has to be complete and occupied before it is classed as a building. So we are not saying today that One World Trade Center is the tallest building in the US. We are saying we are projecting it to be the tallest building in the US when it completes early next, which is projected for early next year. What you see in this diagram here is the tallest 10 buildings in the world as we anticipate it when One World Trade Center is complete. And you will see that One World Trade Center moves into number three position in, in, on that list. The tallest building in the world is Burj Khalifa, complete and occupied. S number two is Mecca Clock Tower in Saudi Arabia, complete and occupied. Number three will be One World Trade Center. You will see that S Willis Sears Tower is in number 10th position in terms of its relative weighting in the world. And if you look at that diagram, you will see that the reason that the, the topmost structure on the Willis Tower does not count in the height is because those are considered antennae and not spires. So there's an image of the, of the Willis Tower, and you can see those antennae, and you can see the height of the Willis Tower. Um, which and is, so we see right there, New York will be able to have bragging is, uh, rights once One World Trade Center is completed, that is projected for early next year. But and as being classified, once that construction is complete, as being the tallest building in the United States, it will be the third tallest in the world, as we've just heard there, going up against the Sears, what was the, known as the Sears Tower, now of course the Willis Tower in Chicago there bragging rights and obviously world prominence on the stage right there. And again, that is once World Trade Center is completed, that's scheduled for next year, it will be classified as the tallest building in the United States, the third tallest building in the world. We have a complete report right here on abcnews.com. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report.